I applied for the green card lottery and won two times. I advised my brother, I guided him through the process, he applied for the green card lottery and he won. After that, I advised four of my friends who successfully won the green card lottery. And as a result, I'm sharing all the tips, all the advice that I shared with them that help them or increase their chances to win the green card lottery. So if you wanna increase your chances of winning the green card lottery, watch all my video so that you get enough information and correct all the mistakes you might be making to increase your chances of winning the green card lottery this year. Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Nafula. If you've not subscribed to my channel, I encourage you to subscribe. And if you've already subscribed to my channel, I just wanna say thank you for subscribing and thank you for watching my videos. I really appreciate your continued support. I just want to send a special shout out to everybody who's participating in my live. I really appreciate your support. I really appreciate your effort, your responses, your questions. We are learning together and I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. So today I'll be showing you how you can edit your DV lottery photo using an iPhone. I'll show you how you can crop the photo and how you can change the date on the photo i know i said before that i didn't know how to use it but guess what i learned the process so that you don't have to so if you just stick around and continue watching this video by the end of this video you'll have learned how to appropriately crop your picture to the correct dimensions and you will be able to change the date that is if you took your picture more than six months ago if you took your picture less than six months ago you don't need to change the date on it but if you took your picture like last year or the year before and you need to change the date on the picture, you need to stick around and watch this video to the end. And as always, before we get into editing the picture, I would like to go over some questions that have been asked so that everybody uh, who's watching this and maybe has the same questions can get an answer. The first question, where can I get the link to apply for the DV lottery? The DV lottery is not open yet, but when it opens in October, all the links will be under my videos description. Like if you go on all my videos and click where it says uh, apply here in October, it should bring you to a page where you can apply for the green card lottery, but you're not able to do that or you'll not be able to do that until October when it opens. Another question, I don't have a postal address. What should I fill in my application? You can just use any postal address. Like you can use if you have a church, you can use their address. If you have a former high school, former primary school, uh, your friend's address, you can put anything there. Literally after you win, they pretty much send everything in your email address. So you need to keep your email address safe. But as far as the postal address is concerned, you can change that later. The only information you can change on the DV lottery is if you uh, is about you, information about you. So your name, your date of birth, your education level and stuff like that. But then for the postal address or the mailing address, you can change that later. So for right now, I encourage you to just put anything there. Uh, it could be a friend's address, any address for right now to apply. And then if you wanna change it later, you'll be welcome to do that. Another question that I have been getting is about the host. So the question is like, I won the green card lottery or if I win the green card lottery, how do I go about finding a host? So the host is a pretty complicated situation. So you need somebody to sponsor you after you win your green card lottery. So literally this person has to fill a form, which is the I-134, if I'm not wrong, so they have to fill that form to say that they will be financially responsible for you for your time in the United States. So as long as you're gonna be in the United States before you become a citizen, they'll be financially responsible for you, which a lot of people are not willing to do. If somebody says they will be responsible for you, and let's say for example, you come to the United States, you convince me, you're like, fill my form, once I come there, I'm gonna work hard, I'm going to be financially responsible for myself but then here's the situation you come here and you decide not to work or you come here i'm not saying that it might happen but you might get sick 
or you might be disabled to a point where you can't work. So guess who's responsible for, for your financial situation? The person who filled out the form. So in other words, if you're here and you're disabled and I don't support you financially and I said I'm going to support you financially, you can actually sue me. Take me to court and either I pay the money or I go to jail. So the best person to actually agree to signing your I-134 form should be your relative. Like if you know somebody and you're like, oh, my cousin, this is my brother, this is my sister or somebody that you know really well, a very close friend, close family member, or close co-worker, any, anything. But you have to know this person really well. You have to know their work ethic, you have to know their character, you have to know which kind of person I'm actually committing my finances or my financial responsibility to. So it has to be somebody that you really know. So if it's a stranger just saying, fill out this form for me, it's hard to actually do it unless you know the person really well. So the hosting has two components. So there's one where somebody has to sign to be your sponsor, and then there's a host where somebody uh, can accommodate you while you get your life together. So if you find somebody to fill out the 134, they agree to fill that, you need a host. That's easy to do because we can connect you with the Kenyan community here, we can connect you with friends, we can connect you with family. So if you're there and you already found somebody to fill your I-134 form and you actually, what you need is just a place to stay while you find a job and get like yourself together, then I can help you do that. Even if I cannot help you, somebody else who needs like somebody or they have an extra space, they can do that. But if for one I, 134 form i'm not willing to do it so if you have a i-134 form and you just need a place to stay for like a few months while you get everything together and start working and find your own place we can work things out we can see how we can help each other out i can reach out to my kenyan community or reach out to my african community and we see how we can help you once you get here but as far as signing the sponsorship you have to find somebody and then as far as hosting, I can help you do that. Another question is like, I have a girlfriend or a boyfriend, I'm applying as single, but then by the time the results come out, we'll be married, so can I add them later? Yes, you can, but here's the problem, you can't immigrate with them. So whoever is on the form is the only one that comes here. Unless like it's a baby who's a minor or whatever, or maybe the baby was unborn at the time of application, that's different. But if you win, you will come here even if you get married after. And then after five years, either you become a citizen or if you've had your green card for five years, you can go back and bring your wife. But then you can't apply a single and then when you process your visa, process as married it doesn't work that way whoever is on the form at the time of application so if you put yourself and your children those are the only people who come here so if you put yourself your spouse and your children those are the only ones who come here so nobody else so if you didn't add them at the time of application you can't add them later so i got another question a very interesting question about a man who has multiple wives or maybe a wife who has multiple husbands and they're like how can we go about it should we just let all the women apply and put me and then when we win i can go with either of them so it's important to understand that in the united states of america polygamy polyandry is illegal actually if you marry two women you will go to jail yeah i know in africa is normal you can marry 10 wives and live happily ever after here doesn't work that way one man one woman so if you're married to two women they find out you got married to two wives you can be disqualified or if you lied in your application you can be deported so it's important that you tell the truth so in cases where people have like multiple wives and multiple husbands and they want to apply, I can't advise you on that because in other words, I'll be like trying to teach you 
how to cheat so I'm not gonna do that so you can do whatever you want if you want to apply you can apply and whatever happens after that then I'm not involved I'm just telling you what like is right by the law here I've gotten questions about parental consent like if you live in a country that requires parental consent it's important to understand that when you go to the interview and you have a minor they know if you have this child you didn't get this child on your own there was two people involved and if two people are involved the two people have the same rights to their children whether the dad is an absentee dad or the mother is an absentee ma'am they don't care they know that this child belongs to two people so both of them have to provide consent not all the countries need that but for the most part they will need consent from the other parent so if the other parent is dead then if you have a death certificate then it's fine but if they are alive and they say nope you're not taking my child to the United States guess what you'll have to either immigrate alone and leave your child there or stay there with your child so before you apply you have to make sure both parents are on the same page so otherwise you'll end up with a situation i've seen people who come here like if he says he wants you know i don't want my child to go some people just come here by themselves and then because you included this child in your application at the beginning when you stay here five years maybe the child will be like maybe 15 and then now they're 20 they don't need parental consent and you can go back and get them so just make sure like sometimes it gets really complicated when the other parent is here like doesn't want anything to do with you going to the United States with their child so make sure you talk to each other uh, and then you decide that okay this is the best for me and my kid and hopefully he will understand your sense another question I got is like I am 20 uh, or I'm 18 or 19 can my parents include me in the application and then I put in my application too and yes you can do that so you can have like your father uh, apply and include you and your mother and then your mother apply include your father and you and then you can place your own application so that way you have three applications other than that uh, if you're over 21 then you need to place your own application and you only can place one application and you can watch my other videos where I have explained why you need to just place one application another question for is a passport required in this application so for this year as far as I know for right now a passport will not be required but then in case it does then you know it is what it is but for right now from what I've heard a passport requirement will be waived for this year I got a question about somebody asking about tariff payment or tariff fee um, so they clicked on a certain link and then it asked them to pay a tariff link to apply for the green card lottery I'm gonna do this again I can't insist enough the green card lottery is completely free 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 F R E E it's free don't pay to apply for the green card lottery if you click on a link it says pay a certain amount of money scam if you go to somebody unless they're charging you just for their services to help you apply they just say oh maybe there's a site that you need to pay scam if somebody says I'll download an app and then you can apply that way scam or if somebody says send a form with your picture and we'll apply for you double scam the link is gonna be on this video below and it's gonna open in October so after October when the link opens and you click on it it should bring you directly to the application and you can place the application yourself don't pay any money you only pay like if you go to a cyber cafe and that guy is like you know running the cyber and they need to you know they need to be paid for their services you can pay for for his effort for his energy but don't pay for the application because it's completely free I hope I've made myself clear I got a question about two names they say the application requires the first name middle name and the last name I only have two names what should I do just put if you have a first name and the last name leave the middle uh, name blank if you have a first name and a middle and no last name leave the last name blank and if you don't have a first name leave the first name blank and then just fill in the middle name and the last name so 
So just fill whatever you ask. If you don't know or you don't have it, either leave it blank or if it has a drop down menu, you just click the drop down menu and select the most appropriate response that applies to you. I got a very interesting question about somebody asking that they heard somebody was denied a visa because of their social media. So for this question, I'm just going to give a tough opinion on it. Maybe a lot of people won't agree with me, but then I'm just going to give it the way it should. So if you hate a country that much that you're saying negative stuff on social media about the country, why would you want to win the DV lottery and go to a country that you hate that much? So in other words, if you say negative things about America and they find out, they will deny your visa. And if you already have a visa, you might be denied entry at the port of entry. So make sure when you apply, you love America. Or at least you show you love America. If you have anything negative to say, keep it here, keep it here. Don't put it on social media. Yes. You can be denied a visa because of your social media especially you can get a visa and when you get to the port of entry and then they look at your social media maybe somebody something clicks or something dings and they decide to like you know check you further for your stuff and then they're like oh open the social media and you open and then you say something nasty about the united states or something bad about the united states president something bad about america the point is if you have all these negative things to say about america why are you coming here so it's important that if you don't like this country or you don't like to go somewhere don't apply to go there and if you have like you know you are the port of entry usually they have a right if they ask you for their so your social media you might need to provide those information you can't say like oh i have rights and i can you know provide my social media accounts and stuff they can do whatever they want because their officers are at the port of entry so it's upon their discretion to let you in or not so just make sure you know with social media stay clear of negativity like if you want to come to america don't try to like say nasty things about uh, america and then want to come here don't say nasty things about kenya and then go there don't say nasty things about whatever country nigeria ghana or whatever don't talk negatively about a country that you want to visit because you want to go there because you see something positive about that country so you'd rather focus on the positive side and just stay clear of the negative side and I agree we have like, you know, everybody has uh, negative feelings about some certain types of government. Like maybe even my country, maybe this, I'm not, I don't agree with a certain type of leadership. It's my, it's my choice, you know, I have a right to feel that way. But then when you express it in a multitude where everybody can read it, it changes a different story. It becomes not only your problem, but everybody else's problem. So... Just be cautious whatever you post on your social media. So if you have negative things to say about any country, you can keep your thoughts here, keep your thoughts here, or anywhere else but social media. That's the advice that I can give you. I got a question about what time can I apply for uh, the green card lottery? There's some, there's some people who say that, you know, they've had success applying the first week, or maybe they tell you to apply the last day or whatever. It doesn't matter. You can apply the first week. I applied the first week. Uh, somebody else applied the second week. The other one applied the last week and they won. So it really, it really doesn't matter. As long as your requirements are spot on, then everybody has an equal chance of getting selected, whether you apply the first week or the last week. Just as long as you are in the pool and they run the lottery and your number gets picked, then you win. So it's equal chance of everybody getting selected. So the time, the day, doesn't matter. You can do whatever is convenient for you. I've had questions about people who are asking, can I apply with lipstick on or with earrings or with like, you know, uh, braids? For me, like everybody who applied, all the applicants that I helped had a natural look. So I don't know, I, I don't have an advice for that because I don't work for the DV lottery. So I don't know if that will affect. 
so instead of me giving you the wrong advice i'll just tell you whatever i did and all my applicants had a natural look and then i had a question about i'm a single parent or i'm single i've heard like people who are married or have families they have a high chances of getting selected wrong that's a lie i applied when i won twice in 2010 and in 2011 i was single at the time and i didn't have any kids so i just applied on my own when my brother applied he was single no kids he won of the friends uh, that applied two of them one had a kid still won single the other one was married with kids and she won so it doesn't matter like whatever you apply single married unmarried separated divorced all of you have the same chances of getting selected and then a question i got about can we send you a photo for you to edit for us no you cannot why because i'm not an immigration lawyer i'm not an immigration lawyer i'm not an immigration expert i'm just giving all this advice based on my experience so if you send me your photo and i edit it and you don't win you'll be like maybe i did something to your photo i didn't do it correctly and i don't want that to happen so i'm just giving you the tools for you to do yourself and you can do it i did it myself and i won you can do it yourself and you can win and whatever i'm telling you is whatever i use to crop my picture so with all that information you should be best ready to apply or to crop your picture to use in the application and back to what we're here for today learning how to edit a dv lottery photo using your iphone and before wasting much time let's hop on the computer so to begin i'm gonna be showing you how to edit your dv lottery photo using your phone and a couple of things to note i just realized like you can edit with your phone you can just crop the picture and then edit the date on it but then if you have to change the properties of the picture then you might need a computer or a third party app so with a third party you know you'll have to pay for it and for this channel uh, we try to make sure like you're spending the least amount of money or at least um, we're trying to do a lot of stuff free so to ensure that you get it done free then for the picture you will crop and change the date using the iPhone and then you can transfer it to either a Windows computer or in my case I'll transfer it to a Mac and I'll just change the properties that way. Actually to edit the picture using the phone is much easier than using uh, the computer like I showed you in my previous videos. So as you can see um, I'm sharing my phone right there as you can see here we'll just use the photo app and it's just similar to uh, the app that we use in Mac you see they have the same kind of image like this one right here at the bottom and this one right here they're similar so that's what we'll be using uh, to edit the photo so assuming you already saved the picture on your phone so we'll just find where the picture is and now that I already saved it I'll just go to my photos and then click that and then find the picture so this is the picture that I've been using before and I've tried to maintain consistency using the same picture so that you just see how you can edit the same picture but then there's different ways of editing it so that's the picture and as you can see up here it says October 1st 2011 so this is the actual date that the picture was taken so to make sure that you don't forget, you will start by editing the date first and then crop the picture because sometimes you crop the picture and then you save it and forget to change the date and that's not good. So let's start by just changing the date. So to change the date, you'll just scroll up. You see the way I'm scrolling up. So you just swipe up and then it brings you some properties there. It says Saturday, October 1st, 2011. And then it just kind of shows you some other properties. There was a Canon camera that took the picture. So you'll need to edit those details because that, like I can see, is like 5 MP, you know. So we'll need to adjust that, but we'll need to use a computer. 
our photo is already in a JPEG format here. So we don't need to do anything with that. So to edit the date, so you just go here, you see the way it says adjust here. So you're going to click on that and it brings you to this um, date here, which is October of 2011. Uh, what we need to change, we need to change the year because this is 2011. We want to use this picture in 2022. So we have to say the picture was taken in 2022 or at least uh, adjust the time to 2022. So you see this arrow here. So I'm just going to click on that. And then it brings you the month and the year. So you'll just scroll up, keep scrolling up until you get to 2022. And you can say the picture uh, was taken like a month earlier. So I'll just put September of 2022. So it brings you to September 1st, 2022, which is less than six months before um, you placed your application, which meets the requirement. But then if you're in Africa, definitely you didn't take it in New York. So what you're going to do, you'll need to change this part here. So we're just going to click on that arrow again. And then I'll just say uh, the photo was taken in Nairobi. And then click that. And then we have our time zone as Nairobi. And our date as September 1st, 2022. And after you're done and happy with the date, you just click adjust and then when you click adjust and you come back to the picture it says the new date up here it was October 1st 2011 now we have September 1st 2022 so now that we are done with adjusting the date we'll need to crop the picture so you go here where it says edit gonna click on that and then you go all the way down you see this thing here you want to click on it and then you see it brings you the crop thing but don't use the auto you see here it's auto we don't want to do that because now our phone has control of how we are cropping our picture we need to have control and you need your picture to be a square and the reason why you need it to be a square is because when you change the properties to 600 by 600, you want to do whatever happens with the height, you want it to happen with the width. So it needs to be a square, otherwise it won't work. So after you click that, so we just clicked this one here. The next thing you want to click, you see this thing right here? You want to click that. And do you notice like once this is highlighted, you get couple options here so you can do it original or free form but what you want to do is click a square like on the computer I clicked the two by two but here there's no I didn't see that option so let's just go with the square so I'm gonna click the square so after you click the square then you'll just use your finger and then scroll up or down to wherever you like I just put like right there but you can see the picture is still not cropped the way I want it so after I adjust the picture to where I want it cropped then I can use this line right here because you already selected a square so when you move this line right here everything in the picture is gonna change but if you don't select square, when you move the right side, the left side would move. And when you move the left side, the right side won't move. So we want all the picture to be cropped in the same dimensions. So I'm going to be moving, sliding this line here with my finger. And as you can see, you see the whole picture, it changes. So we'll do like right there. And then you can bring this one like up a little bit. And I think I like the picture that way. It looks pretty good. So once you're done, you click done. And then as you notice, our picture's date is still September 1st of 2022. So the next thing you're going to do, you see this one here, you're going to transfer. If you have like a, a Mac, 
it's easier if you have a windows then you'll have to save it and then send it as an email and download it or transfer it you know use a usb to transfer it to your computer <clears throat> but since we have a mac it's easy so you just go to this thing here the arrow here and you're gonna click that and then because i'm just sitting right here next to my computer i'm just gonna click this airdrop button right here like that and then it says shaleen's mac i'm just gonna do that and then we get it right here we move it right there the image right here was transferred to our desktop right here so we don't need this anymore so i'm just gonna like get out of that and x out of it okay so to check the properties that of the picture we just added it let's click on the picture which is right there go to tools and then adjust size so as you can see if for some reason we just edited using our phone and we didn't transfer it to the computer to edit again this picture won't meet requirements because you see the width is 1602 and the height is 1602 and the resolution is 72 so that's not acceptable so we have to edit this picture again so that the image dimensions meet the requirement and what you need to do so here you're just gonna type and an important thing to note is like we added it in a square and you'll see the importance of this so for the width i'm just gonna type 600 and you see what happens with the height it also changes if it's a square whatever happens with the height has to happen with the width and then the resolution gonna change that to 300 and then our picture went from 558 to 66 kb so 558 is a big um, size we need less than 240 and now we have 66 so 66 is a good number the resolution is 300 600 by 600 pixels and what do you want to do you want to click ok and then the picture looks small but then you x out of it and then say save changes so let's go back to the same picture so i'm gonna go back right here and then i'm gonna pull the tools again and then i'm gonna do adjust size and what do you see 600 by 600 300 resolution 79 kbs which is still less than 240 kbs which meets the requirements so now this is our final picture so i just edited this image using a phone but then with the properties always remember after you adjust the date and crop the picture using the phone you'll have to go back to a computer to edit the image dimensions so that they meet requirements and that's it guys that's how you edit the dv lottery photo using an iphone i know a lot of you are wondering like i won the green card lottery but how did i find out about the program i found out about the program because somebody posted a link about it on facebook so literally i had a friend on facebook and she posted about the green card lottery and then i applied and i won so what am I trying to say here? So if you know that you have access to this information, it's important that you share with your family, your friends, and everybody else. Because even if they apply, it won't reduce your chances of winning. Everybody has an equal chance of getting selected. So even if you like send it to them and everybody applies, it won't reduce your chances of winning. Everybody has an equal chance of getting selected. So I'm just gonna go over real quick on how you can share my videos with your friends and family. And you just go here, like if you see now, I'm using my phone to watch uh, my video which is playing in the background. 
So what you're gonna do, you see down here, it says share. So you're gonna click on the share. And then once you click on it, it brings you this thing here that says copy the link. And then, so you're gonna go ahead and click copy the link and then your link is copied. And then after that's done, you're gonna go like to your Facebook. You can either X out of that, go to your Facebook, and then create a post. And then once you create a post, you can just create and say, hashtag apply DV lottery. Just like that. And then you're gonna click enter and hold on to your screen and paste the link and make sure like you know up here you select public so that all your friends and people who are not your friends can still um, see the information and then after that's done then you just click the post right here so you just click post you're gonna see the link right here so for anybody who you know they don't know how to find the information once they click the videos they will just you know learn about the green card lottery and apply and the reason why nigeria is not eligible for the program is because a lot of nigerians are in america and you know why Ameri nigerians are in america because they like each other they share information when somebody knows, finds out how to get a scholarship, finds out how to get a green card, they go back home and they tell everybody. So the reason why they're successful is because they share information, which some of us, somebody gets information and they don't want to share with their, with their neighbors, they don't want to share with anybody. But sharing is caring. Sharing won't reduce your chances of winning. So make sure you either share on your Facebook. Another alternative, you can go to Twitter. And then you go to Twitter. And then you again, you just create a post. And then you say you can post the link you just copied. And then you can say hashtag whatever country you want. You can do Kenya. I can do Congo if I wanted to and then you just tweet and that tweet gets to a lot of people so in other words what I'm trying to say if you get something that can help your neighbor having helping your neighbor is not going to reduce your chances of winning or in, reduce your chances of getting successful normalize sharing information with your friends and family thanks for watching